Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, we are going to talk about the work done by a constant force, and we're going to take a look at some of the features of the dot product. Uh, so we're going to start here with a box on a horizontal surface, and it's being pulled with uh, a pull force that is making an angle of theta with the horizontal. Um, and just to remind ourselves, uh, we also have mg going down. Uh, we're going to have a pretty small normal force going up. And let's also throw in some friction here. Let's say we've got a force of kinetic friction going back the other way. Uh, I'm going to throw in one more vector here. Let's say that the box starts here and it moves this displacement, which we're going to call delta r in this case, just to be general instead of using an x. Okay, and what we've seen previously uh, is that this pull force has two components. It has one component going horizontally, and it has one component going vertically. So fp in the x direction here, and then fp in the y direction. And as we discussed previously, the x component of the pull force here is the only horizontal, uh, is the only part of fp that is actually doing any work. If this box is moving to the right, that fp sub x is the force that's responsible for making it want to speed up to the right. Our friction force over here is making it want to slow down. So fp x in this case is doing positive work and the friction force is doing negative work. The other thing to notice is that the y component of fp it's not acting to speed the box up. It's not acting to slow the box down. So the y component of fp doesn't do any work. So then what we see here is the work done by this push force is simply equal to fpx, the only part of that force that's doing any work, times this displacement, delta r. Uh, we are going to recognize that these are vectors here. And we're talking about vector multiplication. Uh, the kind of vector multiplication we're dealing with here is called the dot product. Because work is a scalar quantity, I'm multiplying two vectors to get a scalar. So let's break this down a little bit further because fpx is, as we noted up here, let's see, it's the side uh, adjacent to our given angle. So it's going to be the hypotenuse, which is fp, times the cosine of the angle. So fp times the cosine of the given angle theta times the displacement delta r. That is going to give us the work done by this push force. So what we have here is actually one uh, expression of the dot product of two vectors. We take the magnitude of one vector, in this case would be fp, times the magnitude of the other vector, which in this case would be delta r, and we multiply it times the cosine of the angle between them. Let's write out fp and delta r together when we place them tail to tail. So here's our fp and here's our delta r. And theta is the angle between them when we place them tail to tail, then one definition of the dot product is the magnitude of the push force times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the cosine of the angle between them. All right, And we can use that uh, definition of the dot product to find the work done by any individual force in this diagram. So let's see how it would work, let's say, for the weight force. So putting our weight force, mg, uh, and our delta r vector tail to tail, we see that we have a right angle. OK, so then the work done by our mg force is going to be the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, it's 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. And we see explicitly that our weight force does no work. It's not acting to speed it up. It's not acting to slow it down. Mathematically, using the dot product, we see that the weight force does no work. Similarly, we could do this with the normal force. We'd see, again, a 90 degree angle, because here's our normal force, and here's our delta r. So just even looking at that now, we know that the work done by the normal force is going to be zero joules. Uh, an interesting one is the friction force. If we place those tail to tail, our friction force is here, F sub k, and our displacement vector is here, delta r. Uh, the angle between these two 
is 180 degrees. So using our definition of the dot product, the work done by friction is equal to the magnitude of the friction force times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the cosine of the angle between them, 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 is negative 1. So we see here, oh yeah, friction does negative work equivalent to force times the displacement here. And negative work because it's acting to slow the object down. It's taking kinetic energy away from it. Using the definition of the dot product, we see where that negative comes from. Okay? So let's write this down explicitly here. Uh, what we say here is that work uh, done by a force F is equal to the dot product of, I don't know why that happened, the dot product of the force vector and the displacement vector. And the dot product is defined as the magnitude of the force vector times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the cosine of the angle between them when they are placed tail to tail. So here's some random force vector F. Here's some random displacement. I don't know why it did that. Here's some random displacement vector delta R. And theta is going to be the angle between them. And in practice, you might ask, well, is it important which angle we use? Uh, here we used the smaller angle between F and R as our theta. It actually doesn't matter. If I use this larger angle, um, the cosine of an angle uh, and uh, its, um, boy, don't remember what we call that, 360 degrees minus the angle, uh, is actually the same thing. So in practice, really doesn't matter which angle you use. Generally, we see it just depicted as the smaller angle between the two. Okay, so now let's look at a different form of the dot product. Let's say that our force vector and our displacement vector are given in component form rather than in magnitude and direction form. The previous version we saw of the dot product is very useful when we have the magnitude and direction of both vectors. But if we're given in component form, we can take the dot product as well. So uh, what we're going to write here is F dotted with our displacement vector is going to be, this is super easy, all we do is we take and multiply the two x components together. So it is going to be 3 times negative 4. Plus, now all we have to do is multiply the y components together. So negative 2 times 5. And remember that the dot product is a scalar. So all we're looking for at the end of this is a number. Hopefully I can do my arithmetic correct here. Let's see, we have negative 12, and then we're going to do plus a negative 10. And so we end up with a result of negative 22 joules for the dot product in this case. If you want a more mathematically rigorous treatment of why the component form of the dot product is this way, I suggest you look elsewhere. But in the interests of keeping this video short, I will not uh, show you any sort of rigorous proof. Uh, let's just go ahead and write this out in more general terms. If our force vector is given as some f sub x i hat plus some f sub y j hat, and our displacement vector is given as some rx, oh, let's just say x and y, go back. It is x i hat plus y j hat. Then we can say that the dot product between these two is going to be uh, the x component of f times x plus the f component in the y direction times y. And we would add those together. All right. And this is also still, remember, equal to the magnitude of f times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. So once you've found the dot product of these two vectors using one method, you have some interesting information that could possibly allow you to find the cosine of the, I'm sorry, find the angle between the two vectors when they're placed tail to tail. 
Uh, you already know you can find the magnitude of f by doing Pythag with the components. You can find the magnitude of r by doing Pythag with the components. So if you know the dot product from this side, you know that magnitude, you know that magnitude. A lot of times it's useful to use that to find the angle between those two vectors. All right? So if you're given magnitude and direction of your two vectors, then you're going to use the magnitude and direction form of the dot product, which is that fun expression right there. And if you're given components, it is very straightforward to use the component form of the dot product to find your work done. And you can set those two equal to each other to also find out some other fun information. That's it for this time. Talk to you next time.